disclaimer efforts have been made to not to infringe with any copyright if so it may be brought to our notice for its acknowledgement in future editions no part of this digital content be reproduced stored or distributed in any or by any means either on paper or electronic media unless authorized digital content for candidate with disability sector agriculture and allied sub sector agriculture allied activity occupation beekeeping reference id agr slash q5301 nsqf level 4 unit 4 b biology and behavior unit 4.4 selection of colonies and mass queen bee rearing selection of colonies the experience or past honey production record maintained by bee keeper helped in making right selection of colonies important attributes for selection of breeder queen these attributes should be based on the evaluation of performance of queen as well as its progeny of springs such as surplus honey produced compactness in brood rearing which a spotted brood should be less than 3 to 5% least swarming tendency gentleness quietness on the comb fecundity prolificity resistant to disease enemies comb raising winter summer hardiness need for mass queen bee rearing the performance of honey bees depends upon the qualities of queen bee to obtain higher colony productivity young freshly mated quality queen bees are required so mass rearing of queen bees is required because a young queen bee lays more number of eggs for longer duration colonies headed by young queen bees swarm less queens are also needed in case of sudden loss of queen bee during colony examination or management transportation and due to the attack of bee enemies fast multiplication of honey bee colonies is needed for higher profitability of commercial bee keeping and there is a demand for quality queen bees for multiplication of their stock conditions leading to queen cell destruction honey bee colonies construct queen cells under three conditions namely swarming super sedior and emergency impulses number 1 swarming impulse this is an impulse for natural increase or multiplication of bee colonies and it cannot arouse under the will by the bee keeper for mass rearing of queen bees number 2 super sedior impulse this impulse is initiated by the failure of old queen bee to produce sufficient quantity of queen substance under such condition a few queen cells are constructed usually on the edges of brood area this impulse 
also cannot be created at will by the beekeepers for mass rearing of queen bees number 3 emergency impulse sudden loss of queen bee creates emergency or queen lessness impulse worker bees in absence of queen substance construct a few queen cells anywhere around the existing larvae of suitable age this impulse can easily be aroused simply by dequeening the colonies during breeding season this impulse is utilized for rearing quality queen bees from the selected honey bee colonies prerequisites for queen rearing method some of the important prerequisite for all the methods of mass queen rearing are preparation and management of breeder colony starter colony and cell builder or finisher colony number 1 breeder colony this is the best performing colony from which young larvae are obtained the hive body of the breeder colony is divided into two compartments by inserting a vertical queen excluder in such a way that one compartment contains six comb of honey and pollen number 2 queen cell starter colony this usually is a strong queenless colony with large number of nurse bees and enough honey and pollen store such colony can also be prepared by uniting two queenless colonies with the provision of emerging brood combs frame with grafted larvae is placed in between larval brood and pollen combs food sealed and third day old larval brood combs are regularly provided to this colony to maintain good population of nurse bees cell builder or finisher colony cell builder colony is prepared 4 days before larval grafting by dequeening a strong colony of 10 or more bee frames the dequeened colony will raise a few queen cells from which the royal jelly is extracted 72 hours after dequeening this royal jelly is used to prime the artificial queen cell cups the arrangement of comb in the cell builder colony should be as given below h double s e y c p e s h where h means honeycomb e where h is honeycomb s is sealed comb e is emerging brood comb y young larval brood comb c frame with queen cell cups or grafted larvae p is pollen comb methods of commercial queen rearing various methods of mass queen rearing are shown here number 1 miller method in this method 
कॉम फाउंडेशन इज कट इन टू डीप वी शेप्ड सेक्शन एंड रीचिंग अबाउट टू थर्ड वे डाउन द फ्रेम इज फिक्सड इन अ फ्रेम हैविंग ओनली द अपर मोस्ट वायर दिस फ्रेम इज देन इंसर्टेड इन इन टू द मिडल ऑफ ब्रूड नेस्ट ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग क्वीन राइट ब्रीडर कॉलोनी शुगर सिरप फीडिंग इज गिवेन टू द कॉलोनी to induce raising of comb cells on v shaped comb foundation sheet and laying by the queen bee in the raised comb cells this comb with eggs is then inserted between larval brood and pollen combs of a cell builder colony remove all other combs containing eggs and young larvae from the cell builder colony queen cells will be constructed along the margins of the given wee cut comb sealed queen cells would be ready for transplanting in the desired dequeened colonies after about 10 days number 2 ala method a newly raised comb is given in smaller compartment of breeder colony for the queen to lay eggs after 3 days of laying the eggs will hatch then the comb is taken to a room with controlled temperature with the help of sharp blade the comb is cut into strips of one cell wide row the cell walls of these strips are shaved down to about 6 mm from the cell base then two out of every three adjacent larvae are destroyed by rotating the match stick in the cells to provide sufficient space between the two adjacent royal cells the prepared one cell wide strip of comb containing young larvae is then glued to a lower edge of a comb already trimmed in a semi circular shape at a lower side with a prepared side facing downwards this frame is then given to a cell builder colony the workers will remold the worker cells into queen cells and the young larvae are reared into queen bees number 3 smith method this method is a modification of the la method here the strips of cells containing eggs or young larvae less than 24 hour old are glued to the wooden bars of the queen rearing frame with the help of molten bees wax these bars then are fitted into queen rearing frame which is then placed into a cell builder colony number 4 hopkin method in this method a comb is placed in the brood nest of breeder colony to lay eggs then the comb is taken out of the colony and is brought into a warm room and placed flat on the table three out of every four rows of cells across the comb are destroyed up to the mid rib leaving every fourth row intact two out of three eggs are destroyed in each of the remaining rows an empty frame without wires is placed on the top bars of three colony 
on the top of this frame is placed the prepared comb with the prepared side facing downwards large number of queen cells are raised on the prepared side of the comb when the queen cells are sealed they can be grafted into the dequeened colonies number 5 do little or grafting method do little or grafting method is the most commonly used method of mass rearing of queen bees by the commercial queen breeders in this method the artificial queen cell cups made of bee wax or plastic are used these cups are first primed with royal jelly and then selected larva of the desired age less than 24 hour are grafted into them this method involves the following steps number 1 preparing queen cell cups for making queen cell cups melt light colored pure bees wax in a water trough prepare a weak solution of honey in water 1 is to 4 ratio dip the forming stick into a weak solution of honey in water shake off the excess liquid and then dip the stick into the molten wax to a depth of 8 to 9 mm withdraw it and hold in air for some moments until the wax solidifies repeat the process 5 to 6 meters every successive dip should be made at least at least 1 mm lesser than the previous one so that the prepared cell cup has thick solid bed and thin tapering walls the cup can easily be removed from the forming drip stick by giving a slight twist with thumb and index finger fixing cell cups on bars pour molten wax on the bars of queen rearing frame to form a thick layer of wax on these attach the cell cups to the wooden cell bar with the help of molten beeswax this way 10 cell cups per bar that is 30 cell cups per frame may be fixed If the cell cups are fixed in zigzag fashion, fifteen cell cups per bar can be fixed. This bar should be easily removed or rotatable to facilitate grafting of larvae into the cell cups. The cell cups can also be fixed on small softwood pieces. dipped in molten beeswax these pieces are then fixed on the bars of the queen rearing frame larval grafting acceptance of young larva that is less than 24 hours is very high therefore such young larva are grafted from breeder colony comb to the fixed queen cell cups this is called dry grafting avoid exposure of grafted larva to extreme temperature conditions before larval grafting the cell cups may be provided to a colony for an overnight for the bees to work on the cells and polishing in order to make them more acceptable in case of wet grafting priming of queen cell cups is done before grafting of larva another method is 
डबल ग्राफ्टिंग इन विच केस टू इंश्योर सफिशेंट अमाउंट ऑफ रॉयल जेली फॉर नर्सिंग द क्वीन ग्राफ्टेड लावा आर रिमूव आफ्टर ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स एंड देन न्यू यंग लावा ऑफ लेस देन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स एज आर री ग्राफ्टेड इन टू दी सेल कप्स टेक केयर टू अवॉइड फिजिकल डैमेज टू द लावा ड्यूरिंग ग्राफ्टिंग पुट द फ्रेम विद ग्राफ्टेड लावा इन टू द सेल बिल्डर कॉलोनी क्वीन सेल कंस्ट्रक्शन अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ क्वीन सेल्स आर रेयर्ड बाय द सेल बिल्डर कॉलोनी द क्वीन सेल्स आर सील्ड इन अबाउट फाइव एंड आर रेडी टू बी ट्रांसप्लांटेड इन टू मेटिंग न्यूक्लियर टेन डेज आफ्टर ग्राफ्टिंग बट बिफोर इमरजेंस ऑफ क्वीन बीज आफ्टर ट्वेल्व डेज so in the next video we will discuss about management of honey bee colonies during nectar and pollen dearth period